MIDI is an acronym for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's not a physical object that one can touch and see, but is a set of standard communication specifications for transmitting musical information between electronic instruments or between electronic instruments and a personal computer. The MIDI specification, which was first released in 1983, was developed out of musicians' interests in finding ways to get synthesizers from one manufacturer to talk to those from another. Keyboard players wanted to be able to simultaneously generate sounds from many instruments, but were physically limited to playing only two at a time. The solution that they found was to develop a communications protocol that would allow a master keyboard to control all of the other instruments. Computer users soon recognized the value that the MIDI standard offered them. Rather than using a keyboard as the control device, they could use the computer as the master controller, and with MIDI software and a piece of hardware called a MIDI interface, they found that they could manipulate musical information in ways that had previously been impossible. The world of MIDI is now opening up to other instrumentalists aside from keyboard players. Such instruments as saxophone and guitar are now able to convert MIDI information as well. Sequencing is the number one software application for musicians. What is sequencing? It can be compared to a multi-track tape recorder or the scroll of a player piano. Rather than recording the sound, it records the performance information, such as when the note was pressed down, how long it was held, and then can feed this information back to the keyboards for playback. It's a powerful tool for musicians because it allows them to fix mistakes just as in a word processor, or to rearrange the composition, or to change sounds without having to re-record. MIDI allows a musician such as myself to become a one-woman band. A single musician or composer can write all the parts to a song from the basic rhythm tracks up to the melody and harmonies. This gives a musician more creative control over their work and allows them to arrange and experiment with sounds before bringing in the other musicians to record or perform. This is the Apple MIDI box. It looks like an Apple Talk drop box and works with the Apple 2GS and any Macintosh. The Apple MIDI box has its own power supply built in. This distinguishes it from many of the other MIDI boxes on the market. The MIDI box is connected to the computer and comes with two MIDI cables. It's important to know that MIDI is unidirectional. A different cable is needed for the out and for the in information. The MIDI in connection goes to MIDI out on the keyboard. And the MIDI out on the MIDI box goes to MIDI in on the keyboard. This is an example of a simple setup. The Apple MIDI box can also hook up to a more complex setup with multiple keyboards and drum machines. These can be daisy-chained, connecting the throughs of each keyboard, or a MIDI through box can be used, connecting all of the MIDI ins. For demonstration purposes, we're using the sequencing program Performer, made by Mark of the Unicorn. These are the main windows of Performer. The counter window allows us to know which measure we're in and keeps track of the measures as we record. The window in the upper right-hand corner looks much like a tape recorder. You'll note the play, rewind, pause, and record functions. Below this, we have the tracks window which indicates all the different parts. This shows us the name of the track and which MIDI port it's connected to. On the left is the markers window. I can use markers to set the various parts of a song and access them instantly. Below this is the metronome window. The metronome controls the speed of the playback. The first process is to select the patch through from the basics menu and choose auto channelize and click on OK. Next we'll start with the first track, the drums. 
First, I'll name the track. Then I'll select the MIDI port. The MIDI channel selects which channel this instrument is going to. Each instrument has its own channel, and each sound has its own channel. Now we're recording the drum part. Through the keyboard, I can trigger the drum machine and play the drums off the corresponding keys on the keyboard. This keyboard is named the controller keyboard because from it I can access any of the other sound modules. Now we'll play back the drum part. 